What's up everybody? It's me, Jess Daniel. I felt the need to come on today and talk to everybody about a message that's been prevailing. It's been prevalent for a while. It's this message of independence. I think at one point it was it was good. It may have been pure. But somewhere along the way it's got taint it's gotten tainted. We live in a world that is woven of interconnected threads. I am, you are, we are because of one another. You affect me and I affect you. If you don't believe it, talk to anybody that's married whose husband and wife goes into work, carefree, loving, living life, and how much that's changed by the time they come home. Someone else's issues, problems, worries, fears, or happiness or joy can rub off on them. You often hear of this when someone complains or, or vents, if you will, about their day at work. So-and-so did this, so-and-so did that. And that attitude, that feeling, whatever it is, had an effect on your spouse, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your friend, your family member, and they bring it home. And now they're upset or they're happy or they're filled with joy based on a circumstance that had nothing to do with them. Nothing in life exists on its own. The food that we eat, the houses that we live in, the air that we breathe, the sun that shines, the happiest moments or the darkest of times are all dependent upon the smallest things working together, whether it be your heart that beats or your mind that gives signals of stress or relief. Everything is connected. We exist in relationship to all, are affected by all, and affect all. We live in a dangerous time where people believe in this independence, that they can no longer trust their fellow man, their neighbors, their friends, their family, they can't even trust themselves. The overwhelming message is trust me and only me. As a result, we have an exaggerated aversion to ask anything of anyone, even when we're in dire needs. I can do it by myself. I must do it all by myself. And in reality, nobody's winning alone. Nobody's succeeding alone and nothing is ever accomplished alone. I'll take these glasses off because uh, I know sometimes they, they cause a glare. The reality is the effect of deficient relationships have risk. These risks are comparable to inactivity or obesity. Interpersonal relationships is comparable to such risk factors as smoking and alcohol and even exceeds the dangers posed by physical inactivity and obesity. The beauty of the age of the internet has turned into the age of scrolls and trolls. Nonsense, to be honest. Too many people with too much time on their hands. The hurt people have the mic. Rock hard personalities. Hurt, wounded honestly almost children-like mentalities amplify 
distorted messages imprinting limitations on those who experience similar events or are malleable enough to become indoctrinated to such dogma. All men are this, all women are that. To be honest, it's quite tiring. And my lingo from the 90s is played. It's preventing a lot of people from a lot of healthy relationships, but it's prevalent. We need to unplug from it. The unfortunate thing is, is for so many, rhetoric becomes identity. See, we gravitate towards environment endeavors. Our views become our realities. Our realities become what we put out into the world. We gravitate to environments and endeavors that can only confirm the view and reinforce its validity. There's a poisonous consequence for the loss of compassion from hurt or greed. Most are hurting, few are healing. And the message of independence simply isn't helping. The lies we're being promoted and pressured to live simply don't meet our psychological or physiological needs. The need for connection, for togetherness, the need for a collective sense, no truth and belonging. I don't care what it is, cars, clothes, jewelry, any inanimate object, social media will not fulfill you. The internet, even FaceTime are forms of connection, but they don't scratch the surface. They're all bound by limitations. See, we receive these images on a screen, hear the reproduction of someone's voice, post and reply and think that we've made a connection. Although it is a connection, it's the smallest, most fragile semblance of a true connection that there is. And if we take these connections and double and triple down on them until it becomes prevalent, so prevalent in our lives that we can't make true connections, then it, it grows a void the original issue is never addressed. The issue that you long for meaningful relationships. Again, the world is woven of interconnected threads. We exist in relationship to all, or affected by all, and affect all. The paradox of the 21st century as great as it is, it seems like we're all avoiding the essential maintenance of our lives. Awareness of the moment has become something to fear. If it doesn't provide an immediate sensation of superficial bliss, then we ignore it. We avoid it. Until it can no longer be ignored. We are technically more connected than at any other point in the history of mankind. Yet our technological connectivity often leaves us feeling mostly disconnected, isolated. We have to get back to authentic relationships. We gotta build this capacity to feel again, to touch again, to love again, to be present, to be aware, to be vulnerable, to overcome, to live, to laugh, truly laugh in a moment where we share the laughter with others, where someone can recall something that you don't recall. We miss that in the age of social media. We miss the feeling of the warmth of someone's touch, the hand on your back as you bend over and, and, and have this gut-wrenching laugh. We, we lose the moment when you cry and because someone else is filled with so much laughter, you begin to laugh and you can't stop laughing and the the laughter is uncontrollable and you remember this moment for the rest of your life 
social media, it provides a temporary fix and it has allowed people to connect with others. But the truly meaningful relationships have come from the building upon this initial interaction. We've lost touch with the fullness of human contact, building virtual personas that aren't real. The vixen or the male model who poses seemingly effortlessly on a private island or a private jet or a, a fancy five-star restaurant is for a moment in time and it may not even be real. It certainly can't tell you how fulfilled they are. The sad thing is, is that others are taking these and they're competing with a virtual image. They're competing and attempting to base their self-worth off of a fictitious representation of someone else. This does nothing more than feed artificial personas while our hearts, our minds, and our souls are perishing, void, destitute, deficient of true sustenance. We're not feeding it. <laughs> We're not feeding our minds with a good book. We're not feeding our hearts with a hug. We're not feeding the soul. Now, I'm not a religious guy. I was raised in a church, but I'm not a religious guy. However, I am aware that there is so much wisdom from the books, a Bible, a Quran, um, any, any, any scripture, well, most scriptures. <laughs> I think it's important that we draw from this wisdom. And so I wanna draw to illustrate this point from the book of Genesis. Turn your Bibles to chapter. No, nah, I'm just playing. Uh, but I took a look at the story of creation and it talks about how God formed Adam from the dust and he formed all of these trees and he formed this river and there was gold and gems and onyx and diamonds and and God, he, he took a look and said, it is not good for man to be alone. And so he created animals, wildlife, living creatures of the land and of the air. And it still didn't work. So we got to think about that. Think about how Adam lived in paradise. He had God, a, a direct connection to God, <laughs> walked with God, and it wasn't enough. There was still something that he needed. God, knowing this, created a woman. Now, most people know what happened next, but the point is, Adam had everything. He had dominion over everything. He had every material possession that you could think of. Adam was truly the richest man in the history of the world because everything belonged to him and none of it could provide the joy, the fulfillment of a truly interpersonal relationship. There's this fear, like this, this avoidance of an awareness of the, the present moment. It seems as if people are desperately seeking to escape the realities of their circumstances. Life is tough. And 
I don't believe that relationships uh, will solve everything. It'll open you up to some hurt. It'll prune you. It will change you. For better and for worse, to be honest. But I know we need people. I know that you can climb the top of a mountain and the first thing that you would want to do is tell someone, share it with someone who would genuinely be happy for you. I'm not saying that we should always be connected. We should always seek to have someone around because we need a break. We need time to ourselves. We need to take a break from life. But I think it's so important to have a group of people when you need time to to recoup, to rejuvenate, to revitalize, will welcome you back with open arms and want to hear of what you've experienced and want to play around and laugh and joke, who want you to succeed in whatever area you want success. When you do experience this success, it's made so much better by the people who saw you and heard you and felt you and championed your beliefs, your grit, your journey, your life. Social media doesn't do that. It can't. People can. I always ask people, what's the most important asset on earth? It's people. It's not even close. We can look at the story of Adam. He had everything. He needed another person. I hope this helps. I hope that it allows you to escape this world of illusions. The illusions of independence. I got this little dog coming. He's making a lot of noise now. So until next time, I'm just Daniel. Get connected with All Things Connected.